every company should have a communication plan for times of crisis and times of non-crisis. It's an essential uh, requirement of any company that wishes to be successful today. However, uh, these times we are living, which are times of crisis, which you know, we, all, we are all too well aware of, um, have put the focus on whether we've actually thought about how we communicate when crises occur. Crises always occur. Uh, one could all say there are two types of crises, those that come out of long-standing problems. Maybe we've neglected aspects of our health and safety um, program, and uh, as a result, we have a crisis. Then there are crises that occur like black swans out of the blue, as you say in English. Uh, totally unexpected that we just couldn't have predicted. So uh, I think these present circumstances underline the importance of having thought about and elaborated a, commu a crisis communication plan. Thinking about managing communication crisis uh, requires, first of all, for it to be uh, part of the thinking um, of top management. This is not a uh, minor issue. It's a vital executive issue. And it's something that uh, requires the creation of teams, the creation of protocols, logistical planning, um, cultivation of um, our media relations on a long, short, and mid-term basis so that when crises occur, we're not suddenly uh, finding ourselves with, uh, with few media friends. Companies, if they're prepared, they can be very confident in their, in their media relations. If they've got their spokespeople prepared, if they've trained them, um, and if they have got policies which are uh, oriented to transparency, uh, to openness in, in their relations with their stakeholders, then their media relations should be um, characterized, I'd say, by um, prudence, but uh, also facilitation. How can you be reassuring in crisis? I think this is very important. Um, if you are prepared, then you're going to have a great, greater chance of being reassuring because you know uh, how you're going to respond, communicatively at least, to the crisis. I think it's very important for people uh, to, be, to be cautious, not to um, rush to give information when they're not sure about something. We're, we're probably all aware of examples where information was given too quickly and then found to be incorrect. Um, so caution, prudence and preparation uh, will allow you to manage successfully your communication in crisis. Uh, the communicator's uh, personality, of course, affects uh, their, uh, their communicative ability. And uh, a sensible company will choose uh, people, create teams, um, using the talents, um, for, if you like, maximizing the talents of their, of, of their workers and, and choosing people who have personalities that are more apt for communication. But that's not enough. It's also necessary to train people, to prepare people, because it, you just cannot improvise good communication. The first point I'd make is that you need to have carried out simulacrums previously, which has allowed you to do pre-evaluation, if you like, to see whether um, the program that you have devised is actually workable, if it works well. And after the crisis, it's probably something that you're, you feel slightly reluctant to revisit, but it is, it is important to see whether your systems and processes worked well. And, um, and that, that is a necessary part of having a, a well-run, well-thought-through uh, communication plan. For all the reasons that we've been discussing, and um, this is why ESA is offering now uh, a program in management of crisis communication. It is a program which um, is eminently practical so that there will be case studies and there will be a simulacrum of a crisis so that you can see how you uh, function in a crisis because one thing's the theory and another thing's the practice. And the course um, is designed to give you the knowledge, help you develop the skills 
and see where perhaps uh, you need to do more um, to develop and, and devise an excellent plan of communication in crisis for your company.